Hi, and welcome to a lecture on reflector rays. The three diagrams I'm showing here are intended to demonstrate the concept of a reflector ray. Let's begin with the one on the left. Here we have three antennas, which I'm showing as dipoles, but these could be any antennas. All that matters is that they have terminals, and we can access those terminals and consider the voltage and current at those terminals. We have an incident wave, a wave incident on this array, and each antenna is open-circuited. Since each antenna is open-circuited, the current at the antenna terminals is zero for each antenna. And therefore, the power received by each antenna is zero. It follows that no antenna can accept power or remove power from the wave. So the only thing that can happen is that power, which is instant on the array, is scattered. I say reflected here, but really this is about scattering in general. We could consider a second case, which I show in the middle here. In the second case, the only difference is that the terminals of each antenna element are short-circuited. Now, when they're short-circuited, the voltage across the terminals is zero. So, once again, no antenna can accept power. No power can be delivered to a receiver attached to such an antenna. So once again, all power is scattered. The difference will be, between these two cases, that there is a 180 degree phase shift. So if you consider the phase of a wave which is scattered by an antenna, which is open-circuited, and you compare that to the phase of the field which is scattered by the same antenna, but which is short-circuited, then you will see this 180-degree phase shift. So this gives you an opportunity to do something clever. You could implement a reactive phase shift. Now at one extreme, a reactive phase shift is an open circuit. At the other extreme, a reactive phase shift is a short circuit. The difference is that a phase shifter can implement anything in between. So for such a device, we have that the real part of the impedance attached to the antenna is always zero. It's the imaginary part of the impedance that's changing, going from minus infinity to plus infinity. So in all cases, all power will still be scattered. The difference now is the phase of that scattering. So we could have a phase here, which is determined by the phase of this reactive phase shifter. And we could have a scattered field with a different phase here by setting this reactive phase shifter to a different phase. Since different phases are now possible, we can do things like focusing and beam forming in much the same way that we could with a traditional transmit array. Finally here, let me note that these reactive phase shifters are commonly, not always, but very commonly done using varactors. A varactor is a diode. Specifically, it's a diode that has capacitance, which is proportional to a control voltage. So a varactor is a diode that has capacitance, and the capacitance of that diode depends on the bias voltage. And in this way, you can control the reactance of that diode. So how can we use this idea? Well, as I alluded to before, we could do focusing by controlling those phase shifts in a certain way, which requires knowledge of the incoming wave. You could set these phase shifts such that the phase of the scattered fields are all equal at a desired location in space. That's focusing. Alternatively, you could do beam forming, which is simply making the phases of the scattered fields all be the same along a phase front. Another way to interpret this is that beam forming is focusing at infinity. So it's the same as focusing, it's a special case of focusing, it's just that the focus has been moved off to infinity. Of course, if you see those two possibilities, you see that there are many other possibilities. In addition to focusing and beam forming, you can do multi-beaming, you could do pattern constraints, you can do diversity and MIMO, and more generally, you can think about this reflect array as a way of doing propagation channel modification. You can think of this as a way to create additional multipaths 
or to control the characteristics of multipaths in a larger network. This then leads to the concept, which has recently become popular, of intelligent reflecting surfaces, or IRSs. Uh, these go by many other names, reflecting intelligent surfaces, uh, large intelligent surfaces, metasurfaces. These all mean more or less the same thing. These are essentially ways of controlling scattering from some surface that allow you to do these things. Now, this is not a free ride. There are some important things to know about reflector rays. The first one is that you can't scatter more power than you can capture. In other words, the amount of power that you can manipulate depends on the effective aperture of the reflector ray. So for example, polarization will limit the degree to which you can access that power. Impedance matching will limit the ability to access that power, and so on. I mean, if you have copolarized incident fields and you can conjugate match to them, then you can think of having a received power which is equal to the instant power density times the effective aperture. That is, in fact, the way the effective aperture is defined. And then you can think about this power as being the power available to re-radiate, because once again, in principle, you would not actually trap that power. You would simply catch it and throw it back out into the environment. But if you consider that all these things are things which are limiting effective aperture, then you can see that there is a limit to how much power you can throw back out into the environment. Furthermore, you know that the effective aperture for a compact array is going to be less than or much less than the physical area. Certainly, if the array is fully sampled, that is, its aperture uh, satisfies the Nyquist criterion for sampling, then the effective aperture is going to be less than the physical area. And it, again, it might be much, much less than the physical area because of polarization, matching characteristics, and these other things. So the aperture efficiency plays a role here. Secondly, path loss for individual elements in a reflect array always, always, always goes as instant distance squared times scattered distance squared. There is no avoiding this. And uh, if you're not clear on why that is, uh, there is another lecture that I've done that addresses exactly this point. But the idea is that if you have an element in an array whose dimensions are small relative to the distances involved, then it's very, very, very difficult, I would say essentially impossible, to avoid going as the fourth power of a distance. Now, even if you consider all those elements at once and you consider the ability to do things like focusing and beam forming, the path loss is still generally going to go, it's going to be proportional to the instant range squared times the scattered range squared. Because, once again, for a structure or a scatterer whose dimensions are small relative to the instant and scattered distances, it is essentially impossible to avoid this range dependence. To do better requires you to achieve conditions of specular scattering, which means scattering in which the finiteness of the structure does not contribute diffraction, which in some sense is responsible for this range dependence. So in other words, to beat this condition, to have a reflector array which exhibits something resembling specular reflection, or better, then you have to do something very special. It's not enough for the reflector array to be electrically large. That is, it's not enough for the array to be electrically, to be large relative to wavelength in all dimensions. You also need for those distances of incidence and scattering to be less than the array size. In that case, you have a chance of having a situation where the specular component is larger compared to the diffracted component. And uh, if you have this then, the path loss can be comparable to the sum distance squared and not proportional to a range to the fourth power. That concludes this lecture on reflector rays.